Hello, uh, your closet case. Uh, I have no time to make this video, so this is gonna be shitty. I'm sorry, but, uh, at least I'm making it. Yay, Steph. Um, so this week's topic is basically a top 10 list of gay things, essentially. Um, everyone's basically done TV and movies thus far. And it's all excellent stuff. I would recommend going and checking them all out because um, there's some pretty good recommendations on there. So, what I'm gonna recommend are some gay fucking books. Um, and by gay, I mean homosexual. And by homosexual, I mean the entire LGBT spectrum. So, don't don't worry. Everyone's included. Um. So let's start it off. Number one uh, is a book called Annie on My Mind by Nancy Garden. Um, I have a little list here. I actually put some work into this. Uh, and it's basically just a love story about these two like 17 year old girls living in New York. And one girl comes from kind of an affluence demographic while the other not so much. And it kind of parallels the story of these two um, teachers as well. Um, and of course, in every book, I don't care what the book's about, there always has to be an obstacle. So of course, this book, since it's about two lesbians essentially, is filled with obstacles. Um, and it's interesting because it's written from the perspective of one of the characters writing a letter to an, the other character so it's like a reflection the whole time it's really good i recommend that one first of all um second is called tales of the city and it's fast it's like a really cool concept because it was originally a series of like chapters almost called serials published in a paper and it was only later that it was kind of aggregated into this full-length novel, right? Um, and then I think it was like later made into like a TV show or like a, a movie or something. I'm not sure. Um, but there are six novels, so it's you know a series, um, and it's basically just about the people who live in this apartment complex because for some reason just like strange things are always happening in this apartment complex and it's like um kind of comedic kind of just this like vignette of like the era that it took place um very well written and the characters themselves are like so intricately developed that it's hard to distinguish between whether or not they're real um which is basically every writer's goal um so it's it's great that this book kind of accomplishes that uh and of course tying back to the game gay theme there are several characters who um are gay and i recommend reading that one too um actually i recommend reading all the books that i'm about to tell you about so um yeah uh the other book is called so number three that's not this one's number three, is called The Swimming Pool Library, um, and it's basically about this gay guy who is super privileged, super fluent, um, he's like 25 years old, and he has everything, and then he ends up saving this like older man, um, and by doing so, it kind of changes his whole life around to the point where he really has to reevaluate himself as a person. Um, and of course, his sexuality uh, comes into play with this. So, yeah. Um, the next one, number four, that I'm going to recommend is not necessarily a novel, but more of a queer theory type of book. Um, it's called Sexing the Body by Anne, I can't say it, Fausto Sterling. Uh, just Google sex the bot, Sexing the Body. Oh, and the other one is called The Swimming Pool Library by Alan Hollinghurst. Yeah. Um, so anyways, yeah. Sexing the Body um, by Anne Fausto Sterling. 
it is basically just delving into the whole theory behind why people are attracted to the same sex. Um, and it kind of takes into a, into account a lot of social uh, impacts and yeah, that kind of stuff. So if you're more into analytical type books, more into um, nonfiction, this would be a really good read for you. Um, the next book that I would recommend, I think this is like five, is called Stone Butch Blues by Leslie Feinberg. Um, this one's a lot more about gender identity and sexuality, but it's really a lot about um, being gender queer, essentially. Um, like, not necessarily fitting into a gender norm. And since this took place a while back, it, um, it, it definitely doesn't have all of the terms that we're accustomed to now. So it uses the term like butch or transgender to reflect upon like a more butch mentality. So it's not exactly accurate to how the LGBT community views this issue now, but it's still, I think, a really, um, a re really great read and definitely something that people should look into um, to educate themselves on how it was back in the 1950s. And this is more of like a novel as opposed to nonfiction like the previous recommendation um but there's not enough books surrounding like gender identity issues so this is a good read for that um it basically is about this woman who was growing up in like the 50s 60s 70s um struggling with her gender identity in regards to her masculine versus feminine side and um, kind of experimenting with those roles. So I suggest that. Uh, okay, six. This one's called uh, A Boy's Own Story by Edmund White. Um, it is from the perspective of a nameless narrator that we won't know, don't know ever throughout the whole novel. Um, and it's basically, again, a book about the 1950s, um, about what it's like to be growing up in the 1950s with like divorced parents, um, schoolmates who bully. So a lot of the same issues kids are dealing with now just set in the 1950s. Um, and this boy kind of finds consolation and gets away from all of this bullying and all of this home turmoil by delving into um, his like literature and books essentially and so he's really excited about this and really just eager to kind of cultivate some kind of friendship um, and through this process of delving into this kind of imaginary realm and wanting to cultivate like human interaction, he kind of starts realizing and goes through the process of realizing that he himself is gay. Um, and it, he ha goes through a lot of struggle and with guilt and kind of reconciling with his identity, um, which again is something that we all go through even now. So I think it's really relevant. Um, so it's great. Uh, I think seven? Are we on seven? Hopefully we're on seven. I don't know, I think we're on seven. Uh, this one is called Love and Rockets, and it's more of a comic strip. Um, and it's a comic strip written by two brothers. Um, normally they go by Los Bros. I can't pronounce any of this. Los Bros. Hernandez. Um, and... It's kind of surrounding uh, I don't know how to put this. Google it. Look it up yourself. It's fantastic. But um, there is a gay storyline between 
this kind of rocker who just sucks at playing the bass um, in like these punk bands, right? And she has m a multitude of kind of lesbian love interests throughout the comic book series, um, including like a guitarist and her best friend and all that kind of stuff. So it kind of just takes you on an adventure through, through not only her life, but a bunch of lives in general. Um, it's really interesting because it really accurately reflects the passing of time in terms of um, as the characters are experiencing like new life developments, they also physically change. Their, their character is completely dynamic, and that's something that's really rare in books these days, especially comic books. So, um, as far as literary merit goes, it's fantastic. As far as the fact that it's a comic book, graphic novel, that's fucking fantastic, and it has a gay story. So, I mean, you kind of win on every front of this one. So that's Love and Rockets by Gilbert Hernandez and his brother Jamie Hernandez. So another comic, if you're into that, is called The Essential Dykes to Watch Out For. Um, and this is basically a comic that chronicles, it's basically the L word wrapped up into a comic book. So it's chronicles just these lives of this diverse group of lesbians, um, kind of living somewhere in the United States, and it's like soap opera storylines and uh, commentary on social and political issues during the time, and yeah, I would suggest checking that one out too, just like all these other ones. Um, Mostly because it's a comic, and comic sort of is kind of fun to read, like you can look at the pictures, and it's not like a, like a just laugh out loud <laughs> kind of comic, it's a, one that actually kind of challenges your think, like the, your process of thinking, which is rare. Um, yeah. And now we're going back to more of a, a uh, non-fiction type book called Undoing Gender by Judith Butler and it's basically just a reflection on gender and sexuality and how those two um, intertwine while focusing on this psychoanalysis of taboo issues like incest, transgenders, intersex, diagnostics, um, violence, because of sexuality and gender and um, all that kind of stuff. It's great. If you're into more nonfiction type stuff, this is definitely a um, route to go. Um, number nine is called Oranges Are Not the Only Fruit by Jeanette Winterson. And this one is just basically about this girl with a lot of religious faith, growing it up in a very, very religious faithful evangelical background and um, kind of coming to terms with her sexuality and dealing with how those two kind of disconnect um, her faith, religion, family versus her identity and her newfound sexuality. Um, so this book is a lot of just reconciling those differences in that process. Um, so yeah. And finally, number 10 is called Giovanni's Room by James Baldwin. Um, and this is basically just chronicles the life of this man um, and is a narrative of his feelings and thought processes and frustrations towards relationships with other men. Um, particularly a bartender he meets um, named Giovanni in Paris. Um, yeah, so that's a pretty concise synopsis of all of those. Um, I suggest reading all of them. If not, you should at least look more into them. I really recommend um, kind of educating yourself more with like LGBT literature. Anyways, this video has gotten really long. Um, so those are my top 10 things, top 10 books. 
read all of them and i hope you guys all have a great night day weekend and i will see you next friday